The Jeremiah Castile Foundation's namesake and founder, Jeremiah Castile, was a fierce competitor on the football field. Jeremiah Castile, there the he is. American. Even from birth, his mother knew that he was headed for the gridiron. I got ready to bring him home. He had real bad knees. I didn't know what the knees were for, but a lady had done said that I had a football player, which I didn't know what she was talking about because uh, I didn't know too much about football at the time. So I got him home, and I got him home. Just a little before I went to bring him home, I looked at his knees, and I thought to stream him. Wonder what was wrong with him. <laughs> well, he must have meant to play football then. He must have played it in the bed. When Jeremiah was born to Joseph and Mary Castile in 1961, they lived in the housing projects in Columbus, Georgia. Alcohol and domestic abuse were common in his home, and it seemed that his life was bound for trouble. I was mean as they come at an early age, uh, you know, fault, temperament. I, I tell people I know God can heal a crazy person, because I was definitely crazy. He had some tough upbringing at times. Uh, when he was coming along, but he overcame that. And, uh, and then his dear mother, I love her to death because she overcame some problems that, that, uh, that he's expressed out to people. I think about it sometimes, I don't know, I, you can't blame nobody. You can't, you can't blame nobody, you just have to just think about it and pray over it and keep on going. As predicted, he developed a passion for football and his difficult upbringing became a springboard for new life on the field. A walk to a local church changed his life forever. I came to this church, Pleasant Grove, Reverend Marsh was preaching, and uh, you know when you walked in, they, they ask you where you saved, and if you didn't know what that meant, they tell you to sit on the front row. <laughs> it's called a mourner's bench, and um, after probably about two or three days, I received the love of Christ in my heart, and I tell people I came in a sinner and I left out a saint, and, and that's the power of the gospel. God has the power. And I tell you what was really powerful for me was for the first time in my life, God communicated with me that he loved me. And that's the greatest need for all mankind. I came here with a need and that need was filled. I came here with a void and that void was filled and that is that God loves us. He loves us and that night I went back home a different person. Jeremiah needed, like so many of these young kids do coming along now, he needed a vehicle. To, to, to get beyond and above his environment at the time, you know, and football was it. Jeremiah's football talent, work ethic, and new heart helped open doors for him. He was awarded the opportunity to attend the University of Alabama on a football scholarship and played for coaching legend Paul Bear Bryant. And no one took Castile. He had a straight run at the ball. But it goes in for a real big score, real big score. His influence on my life today is just so tremendous. Uh, I looked at him as a father away from home. Jeremiah Castile soon became a household name among football fans. He led the tide and pass interceptions in 1981 and 82 and was selected most valuable player for the 1982 Liberty Bowl. It is intercepted, the third interception of the night for Jeremiah Castile. His trophy case was full, but his greatest collegiate honor was yet to come. Getting a call from Mary Harmon Bryant saying that I was one of the pallbearers for Coach Bryant's funeral. Uh, it let me know uh, just what I meant to the Bryant family and what the football players meant. So it really was a humbling situation for me. Soon thereafter, Jeremiah was drafted by the new NFL expansion team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He went from being a decorated team leader, playing for a father figure, to being a rookie on a mission. As a Christian, when I went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I, I, I felt like God had, had really dropped me off on the ends of the earth. Uh, I was around a lot of lost guys, and uh, I felt like the Lord had placed me there to be a light, and just wasn't for sure how I could do that. Afraid to a certain extent, because I was 22 years of age, and, uh, but God kept impressing upon me that I really needed to take a stand for him and let, let, those, uh, let the players know uh, who was Lord of my life. Jeremiah's NFL career lasted six years, ending in response to a deep conviction in his heart. He played healthy, no major injuries. We're very, very thankful for that. And so I um, was able to um, grasp the fact that he was ready to move on to something else. 
After Jeremiah was ordained as a minister in 2001, the Castiles founded the Jeremiah Castile Foundation and purchased a facility in the Woodlawn community, a low-income neighborhood in Birmingham. I see it as we say, influencing, impacting, inspiring uh, young people to achieve what God created them to achieve. You will get the support because it's a lot of kids, like I said, a lot of parents, you know, mm -hmm. and that we just sit on our porch in the evening time. It's nothing to do. It's really nothing to do. The Jeremiah Castile Foundation actively works with students from elementary through college ages. Last year, Jeremiah brought messages of hope and inspiration to students at low-income elementary schools and gave out hundreds of book bags bearing the ministry logo. Every year, the foundation awards the Heart of Houston distinction to student spiritual leaders. Jeremiah directs the student-led ministry at the University of Alabama called Dunamis and is chaplain for the Crimson Tide football team. And that was awesome. I mean, God is so good. Our next initiatives are to complete renovations at the Jeremiah Castile Community Development Center at Woodlawn to provide daily ministry and programs for Birmingham's most needy youth and to host marriage seminars for couples. Please consider getting involved by investing in the Jeremiah Castile Foundation through prayer, volunteering, and donations as we reveal hope and provide much needed tools to tomorrow's leaders today. We just really in need of just you know, just attention. And we all need to get in and behind him because we got somebody like him out in the community, in the inner cities, and dealing with these young kids. We got to help him financial, uh, word of mouth, it's what it is.